I'm a dietitian um, at Hutching Psychiatric Center. I've been there for 30 years. I have two young boys, well, in their 20s now. I was diagnosed with breast cancer basically after a two year process of not feeling well. I was um, feeling sick, had back pains, and was going back and forth to PHP, which is a prepaid health plan back then, and kept seeing different doctors. Um, each doctor doing a different test, telling me something different, and then finally this one male doctor telling me that it was all in my head that I needed to go see a psychiatrist. So I didn't know any different. I was 37, 36 actually. So I did, I went to a counselor and two years later, there was, I had still been seeing doctors, didn't different tests. Um, there was an earthquake and I usually sleep naked and got up and my husband at the time said, your left breast looks weird. What's wrong with it? And I looked in the mirror and my nipple was inverted and I called my doctor right away and this was a different doctor and he said that um, I needed to come in the next morning and see him and when I did he then referred me to Dr. Dennis Brown who is a surgeon and he did a needle biopsy and the needle biopsy came out inconclusive he did a sonogram the sonogram didn't show anything but a perfect circle he told me go home don't worry about it we'll check it out in six months the next morning he called me and said, would you do me a favor? He goes, I want you to do one more test. And I said, one more test? He goes, I want you to have a core biopsy. It's not a pleasant procedure, but I want you to have this core biopsy. He goes, 99% isn't good enough for me. I want to be 100%. Went and did the core, core biopsy a week later, and within eight hours, I was diagnosed with invasive ductal carcinoma and was set up with upstate Dr. Wright, and that's where everything started. Well, I started out with surgery. Um, I had a sentinel node biopsy, and then I had the lumpectomy. At that point, I was given an option of a lumpectomy or a mastectomy, and I decided I was young. Um, after all the you know information that they had for me, they thought it was gonna be just a lumpectomy and radiation. So I said, okay, let's do it. So Dr. Dennis Brown did my surgery. He went in and he said, you know what? We found two lumps. One was two centimeters. One was 1.5 centimeters. You need to go to oncology. So saw Dr. Wright. Dr. Wright said, you know, you can do radiation. But he goes, if you were my wife, you would be, well, I asked him, if I was your wife, what would you do? Mm -hmm. And he said, he goes, I would do chemo. So I weighed all my options, um, did chemo, um, I did cytoxin, adromycin, and then uh, went on to do radiation. Did 33 with five boosters, and, uh, yeah, and then I went on tamoxifen. I felt a lot of different things during the treatment. The, um, the chemo was brutal. Um, they decided since I was young and my veins were good that they didn't need to do a port. So I did everything through my veins. Um, and uh, that was pretty tough. Uh, I had every side effect that you can have from chemo from, you know, of course, losing my hair to the sores in my mouth where I had blisters in my mouth, down my throat. I pretty much survived for four months on Burger King milkshakes that a girlfriend brought over every morning and yogurt. Um, so I think the chemo was very difficult. I had, I mean, and anything, any part of the treatment that I've had, I've had all the different side effects that you can have. Tamoxifen, the grandfather of, for my, I guess, breast cancer at that time, and um, didn't work. I ended up with all the bad side effects that you can have my lining got thick and he said that that could potentially cause cancer of the uterus and stuff so they took me off of that put me on lupron and i did the arimidex for 10 years they put me into menopause a chemically induced menopause which was tough and did that for 10 years i think the most traumatic Part of the whole process was having to tell my nine-year-old and my eight-year-old. So. 
kids. And I didn't know how. I didn't know what to tell them. I didn't know how much to tell them. I didn't know what they would understand. And then I was afraid that I wasn't gonna be there. But I had a nurse at Upstate, Peggy, who was amazing, and she said, you just be honest. You tell them what you can. You tell them everything, and you be as honest. Whenever they ask you a question, you tell them. And I did. And that was probably the best and the most difficult time. I had thought about, um, as far as having reconstruction, I did meet with Dr. Deboni to kind of maybe in, um, do a nipple mm -hmm. and stuff like that, but in order to do that and make them symmetrical, they were gonna have to touch and do surgery on my, my good breast. And if they did that, then there wouldn't be sensation. And I wanted one good breast. And I decided that, you know what, if anybody, if I decided to date, would like me for who I was, not for what I had and made the decision not to do any kind of reconstruction. I feel great. I, I feel great. I feel like, you know, I can do anything. I don't even feel like maybe I was diagnosed with cancer except for the scars that remind me every day, you know, when I look in the mirror. I think I'm stronger. I think I'm a better person um, as far as I don't take, I used to be kind of a worrier. I kind of still worry at times, but I think I just look at things differently. Um, my kids have told me that I'm a better mom and I'm a better person because I don't like take things as serious as I used to and I'm a little more laid back. So I just enjoy life one day at a time, one day at a time. This is how amazing my boys are. One of the things that uh, I kept asking them is, you know, if you ever want to see mommy scar, you know, just, yeah, you know, let me know. Never wanted to, yeah. never wanted to. When they turned 18, they wanted to see my scar. Oh my goodness. How do you wow. show your breast oh my to goodness. an 18 year old? When they turned 18, they both designed their own tattoos. To my, their, uh, that was probably the most. So do you have a tattoo also? No. Okay. No, but I've been thinking about getting one. I feel like a woman, a mom, um, I think I had to kind of question being a woman. Um, after the diagnosis and after my, after my husband left, he left in 2009. Um, he couldn't, I think the cancer, you know, sometimes things either make it better or make it worse. The cancer, didn't help our relationship any, um, and it it didn't work. Um, so I guess questioning my femininity then was like getting back out in the dating world. And was any guy gonna wanna date me knowing that I had scars and only one breast? What was I gonna do? I, I didn't date for a long time out of fear, but I guess that's where I've questioned my femininity. It took me a long time um, and when I finally did date, um, I met this one guy who, it didn't matter. It, it didn't matter. He was a little younger, a lot younger. Um, and it didn't matter to him. He said that I was beautiful no matter what. And that helped, helped change things. So now I feel like a beautiful woman and I am. Yes, he made me feel sexy. He made, the first time I had to take my shirt off or my bra off, and it didn't matter to him. It didn't matter. I felt sexy. And it's been no going back since then. I was nervous to let him touch me. I, you know, the only one that I'd ever been with really was my husband. So it was hard and it was scary. And I was like, oh, you know, is he gonna like me after this? But we dated for a couple of years, so it was nice. My best advice to give anybody, any woman going through breast cancer or being recently diagnosed would be, one, advocate for yourself with your doctors all the time and to have humor in your life. I had friends that, you know, would make me laugh or sit and watch sitcoms with me. And, you know, it was about humor and family. Um, I had my boys with me. I had my mom and dad with me. It was just surrounding yourself with people and letting them help you. Don't be afraid. 
to let people help you because there's part of you that wants to be strong because you know you have to be and that you think that if you let people help you, you're not strong. That took me a long time, um, but let people help you. Reach out, let them help. I'm participating in this project. Um, when I met Tula at the Race for the Cure, we struck up this conversation and I just felt a connection to you. And my boys were with me and they were like, Mom, if you get a chance to tell your story and you can help one person, you gotta do it. So when you called, it was no question. I had to do it. I wanted to do it. I wanted to be a part of something with other women going through the same thing that I have. And just if we can support one another and be there for one another, that's what matters to me.